we're gonna start off with our, we did like a balance reach matrix. We did this in the gym. So we're gonna do a single leg, right? So we're just gonna go forwards and backwards, right? So we're, we're basically pivoting, right? So think of your arms and your one leg totally connected. They're both, they're going in opposite directions. Right? So we're moving in the sagittal forwards and backwards. Let's switch legs. So I'm going to my left leg. My arms are kind of up by my ears. And I'm just kind of like, uh, I'm, I'm hinging sort of like a, what do you call it? Like, a, like I'm pivoting back and forth to the big lever. Good. So now that was the sagittal plane. We're going to go in the frontal plane, which is laterally. So I'm going to have my arms out to the left and my foot out to the right. And then I'm just going to switch sides. So my foot, my feet and my hands are going in different directions. But I'm staying as though I have pieces of glass, one in front of me and one behind me. So I'm staying in the same plane, just going left and right. Let's get two more here. Good, and now we're going to the other side. So my left foot will be out at the left. My hands will go to the right. And again, I'm just going to sort of tick tock back and forth. I have a guest joining me. <laughs> Good, so we're just getting a couple of rotations here laterally and now we're going to move in a transverse plane so the third plane of motion is a rotation so i'm going to stick my right foot out my hands are going to start over on the left and i'm going to totally twist thoracically so i really just want to make a big arc with my hands and my leg but they're going in opposite directions so i'm twisting through the back through the hips my leg is just literally arcing across my body. I want you to breathe. Don't forget to breathe. So you can really feel this warm up the back. This is such a great stretch. All right, let's go to the other side. So left leg will start out on the left, hands are over on the right. Let's switch sides with them. So this is a little bit harder because of the balance, but that's what this is called, is the balance reach matrix. So we're reaching with those arms. The arms are a driver. The legs are a driver. We'll get two more here. Oh boy. Awesome. Okay. Now we're going to come down into a half kneeling position. So if you need a pillow or a little mat, go ahead and do that. Um, all right. So my right knee is down. My right arm is going to come up in the air. You guys know this from the gym, and if anybody else is joining us who's worked out with me, then you probably know this is part of our workout or our warm up in the true stretch. So I'm gonna be, again, we talked about this last week, right? So we're in neutral spine, arm is up in the air, and I'm gonna drive forward, but I wanna try to keep my, my body nice and straight, right? I'm reaching, I'm really reaching up so I can feel that pull in the quad. So I'm getting about five rotations right here. I'm gonna face you guys, and I'm gonna go over that leg. So I'm gonna still pulse forward with this left knee, but I'm reaching with my right arm. So this is just another matrix, but this is more of like a front hip matrix stretch with an arm driver. One more here, and now we're gonna drive across that knee in that transverse plane. So I'm driving forward with the knee, Kind of coming back to neutral, forward with the knee. I'm not arching my back, keeping it nice and straight. <sighs> Exhaling, inhale. Exhale, inhale. <sighs> Good, we're just getting a couple little rotations here. We'll switch sides and we'll go over to our left. <sighs> so I'm getting a nice, again, a nice stretch. I'm just gonna kind of show you this 90-90, right? 90 front, 90 degrees with my back knee. So my left arm is gonna be up in the air. Again, I'm gonna keep that belly button straight to the spine. 
And I'm just driving that knee so I'm getting a nice stretch in the hip flexor. But I'm reaching up as high as I can, not arching my back. I'm keeping my ribs down. So I'm actually holding on to my ribs. Justin has done this a bunch of times in class with us. We really just want to keep that upper body nice and straight. And now we want to go laterally. So we're going over the top, driving that knee slightly forward, still getting front hip stretch, but now we're going into sort of that lateral and you got obliques, whew, we got a little bit of hip, maybe some lats even, really reach. We get two more here, last one. Awesome, now we're going transverse. <sighs> yeah, burning. yep, they're burning, yep, that, my left hip flexor is burning, my quad is burning, so breathe into it. Exhale as you rotate, inhale as you come back. Again, back is nice and straight, ribs are locked down, and we're just rotating. You really want to open that up. So um, I have a certification in applied functional science through Gary Gray, the Gary Gray Institute. Um, the 3D performance series, right? This is all about performance because you guys are athletes and we're taking you through a bunch of different movements and series to really kind of help the body perform better in our sport. Um, basically, we live in a 3D world, right? So I wanted, that's what I thought today. I, well, I listened to a, it wasn't even a podcast. It was an uh, Instagram interview yesterday over the weekend with Andrew Hannon, the guy that I've been following, and another one of his colleagues. And he asked him, he said, hey, what would you, it was literally about yards and years. And it was like, our golfers that we see general population is somewhere around 55 to 60. He's like, what would you do in terms of taking them through like a workout? And he had mentioned multi-planar exercises. And so that's where we are today. It's like, just trying to mix this all up. I love that we threw cardio in last Thursday. I think we might try to throw that a little bit in every Thursday might be our cardio day, but I just wanted to really kind of focus again on some 3D movements, cover all the bases, all those different planes, um, so that we're moving everything in every which way, um, tweaking the body, which you'll see whether it's a small tweak um, in the slightest movement, but literally for prevention, for performance, for so many different things. So the last one we're gonna do while we're down here, and we've done this before, is we're gonna get into that great stretch, right? So if you're in your 90-90, just drop your hand straight down in front of you. If you want a little bit more, you can go ahead and pick that knee up off the ground. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna plant the right hand on the floor, and I'm gonna rotate my left hand up to the ceiling. Just get a really nice stretch in your rear hip, also in your, in your thoracic. Come on down and drive that hand inside of your right arm. So underneath, right near the armpit, right? So we're going to get four rotations here. This is two. And if you get, if you need to be down on the knee, on the knee, that's totally fine. On your pillow, on your mat. Last one. Good. Let's switch sides. So this isn't necessarily a matrix, but it's one of my most favorite exercises, and it's also an awesome warm-up for anything, and specifically for golf. So we're opening up that chest. I'm trying to drive my chest to the ceiling. I want you looking at those fingertips up in the air. Bring that arm back down. Thread the needle under that left arm. Four, four rotations here, guys. Try to keep that knee over your ankle. I don't want to see it flaring out. Good, last one coming up. Awesome. All right, shake it out, grab a quick sip of water. We're gonna start off with the squat matrix. So Shannon, yesterday I took like a bunch of swings and I could feel after I was done that my low back was starting to get tight. And yeah. I did a ton of those half kneeling stretches. Mm -hmm. And just so you guys can kind of see what that half kneeling position, how it translates up, so if any of you guys kind of get into the, your finished swing and you almost feel like you're leaned forward a little bit, if you think about it, this back leg, when you're squeezing your glute and you're coming up tall or you're, you're kind of leaning forward, that's kind of, it's the same thing. 
So on your finish, your follow through, you're stretching the front quad, you're squeezing the back glute and you're getting upright to the target. So one of the things I was telling people, I took an online lesson, uh, the guy who was giving it, he was saying that I was a little bit too far forward on my finish. And he was recommending being up tall, squeezing the glute, front side, quad being stretched. So I came home last night and just because my back was tight, I started doing some of these half kneeling stretches, engaging the glute, stretching the front side quad. And I feel like significantly better today, better than I'm sure I would have if I didn't do it. So um, huge for extension through the swing, making sure that that front of the hip is loose enough and the, and the glutes able to squeeze the way we want it to. Yeah, that's awesome, Justin. That's a great, great point. And because I know when I saw your videos, um, that pro was saying how, I guess when you, something about your downswing, how, you know, you are arching. He's like, he wants you to watch you arching your back because that right. can give you some Well, time. if you think about it, so if we think about why we're teaching core so much versus engaging core, squeezing glute, because if I finish my swing and I want to get upright, I only have a couple options. I can arch my back. Yeah. which is a problem, or I can stay in neutral here, which we're teaching you, and squeeze my glute to yeah. get upright. Right. So if you don't have the range of motion, something else is going to figure it out. Yeah, awesome. Well, continuing on squeezing those glutes, I'm going to go back to pinning my video here so that the recording will see um, the conversation Justin and I are having. So, um, all right, we're gonna start out with a little one, a squat matrix, right? So our squat is basically, we're gonna do one, two, three, four, we're gonna do about five different positions and we're only gonna do three reps in each one. So not to worry, I know you're, you'll be a little sore. So regular squats, right? The knees are behind the toes, your arms are out forward as a lever. Right, so we're just getting three regular squats. And so that basically looks like my feet are about shoulder width apart, right? So you can go to five if you want, that's totally fine. We're gonna go real wide now. So sumo squat, right? But the feet are not super turned out, not totally turned out, just kind of a little bit turned out, but I'm really wide. So we're gonna go three here. And you'll be able to feel by the time we're getting through all the rest of these squats, the difference in how they all feel. So let's get, we'll get, well, let's go five. We'll go five in each one. Now let's go narrow. So see my feet are only about, I don't know, maybe four or five inches apart. Now you're gonna go sit. This is like that chair pose, right? I want those, the butt going back nice and far. I want you to basically sit like you're trying to reach with your butt. Your weight is in your heels. Squeeze as you come up. So Justin was just saying that, squeezing the glutes. Really think about it. If you're not sure, put your hands on your high knee. <laughs> All right, good. So now what I want you to do is go a little bit split stance. So it doesn't have to be that far. If you basically just went into a straight line and then moved your feet apart, there's your split stance. So I'm gonna be in a staggered, essentially it's a staggered stance. So we're gonna do five with the right foot forward and then five with the left foot forward. So here we go. It's awkward, but this is a little tweak. So again, I want you to sit that butt back. Sit it back as far as you can. Two more here. And now I want you to switch legs. So if left is coming up, right is going back. And again, we're bending both knees. It's okay if that heel comes off the floor. I just want you to really bend those knees and squeeze the glutes. So these are all just like these different little tweaks. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to regular, but I'm gonna move my feet. We're going pigeon-toed regular. So Gary, I know uh, Karen's done a ton of these. So Gary's wife, Karen, has worked so hard on her hips to really make them healthy. And Karen is an, a super proficient squat matrix master. So toes are in and we're going five. So you're almost gonna be a little bit pigeon toed. The knees are gonna kind of come in a little bit. They're gonna, we're internally rotating our hips. But again, this is a different tweak. This is, you know, this is another way that we're just changing a plane of motion of squatting. 
So one more here. Now, last one we're gonna do is external. So now those feet are going, they're, they're regular, so they're about shoulder width, but they're wide. And that is gonna force our knees over those toes, right? So we want to, again, sit back. I want your butt to go back, but I want you to keep those knees tracking over the toes. Again, work with the balance. If you need your golf club, that's fine. You need to hold on to a chair, that's fine too. Get one more here. Awesome. Take a quick, try to shake it out, rest. And we're gonna go right into lunge matrix. So again, this is one I've done in the gym. This is a great exercise for like neuromuscular activation, proprioception, um, it wakes up the body. So uh, I'm gonna go three planes, forward, side, and I'm gonna rotate into the transverse. I'm gonna go three on either side. This does not have to be a deep lunge. This can just be a step. When you step off of a curve, that's a lunge. When you go up the stairs, that's a lunge. So we're just literally lunging forward, ever so easy. Now we're gonna go side. Now we're gonna go into the transverse. And I'm basically just stepping, I'm just stepping out. So we're going three, like I said, in each different plane. And I'm going in that same side rotation. So here's my third. You can go as deep as you want. You want to get real deep and load real heavy, go for it. But otherwise, you don't have to. Now I'm going to go left side. So my hands aren't really doing anything. I don't have any arm drivers right now, but we're going to do that next. So we're going sagittal, like the railroad tracks, frontal, laterally, and transverse, rotationally. I've got one more on my left side here. <sighs> Hopefully your booties are getting nice and warm. Our swing, the power in our swing is coming to remove the glutes. So if we can strengthen those, and again, this is all body weight. So this is kind of stuff that I do in some of my classes on Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, now what we're gonna do is that same matrix, but we're gonna drive the arms. So three on each side, I'm gonna drive the arms forwards. I'm gonna reach and I'm gonna come back. And I'm gonna step sideways and I'm gonna reach. And then I'm gonna go transverse and I'm gonna reach. So forward lunge, keep the knee behind the toe, reach. Side lunge, reach to the side, reach in that direction. Reach ro rotationally. Third one. Reach forward, reach side, and transverse. And then I'm going to the left side. So again, try to keep the knees in line or tracking with the toes. And if this is, you know, whatever, whatever your range of motion is. Like I said, you want a real nice deep load, go ahead and do that. Or if you're just like, hey, I just want to step forward just a little bit, that's okay too. This is my third round here. Good. All right, one more time, this last one, and then I promise we're done with the lower body. We're gonna do a little, now if you wanna grab your weights, you can. Um, if you want to grab a golf club, I would grab that overhead, because we would do a curl and a press. So we're gonna do what we call the lunge matrix curl and press. So I'll grab my weights to show you what that's gonna look like. We're gonna go single leg forward lunge, come back, curl and press. You can do this without weights, it's totally fine. Side lunge, come back, curl and press. Rotation, come back. So now we're loading. Drew was talking about grabbing some water bottles, filling them up, putting them into his jacket while he went up for a walk. That was an extra load. So this is just an extra load. But now we're adding in some upper body. Good, rotational, curl and press. I got one more on the right side. Jen, you're getting tired, huh? Breathing heavy. Woo! Uh, oh! <laughs> I think I need to get a new guest, a new guest appearance back here. We need to get some new talent. All right, we're going left side here. Left side, forward lunge, return, curl and press. Left side, lateral lunge. Let the weights just go with the body. Curl and press. Rotational plane. Arms are framing, or the, yeah, my arms are framing the knee. Curl and press. I got two more on my left side. Whew. 
Good. So this is a great burner. This is a great, if you did this with like 20 pound weights, you, it would be a great cardio strength exercise. So something awesome you can do in three planes of motion and adding a little load to it with a little upper body. Woo! Heck yeah. All right, I've got the last one here on my transverse plane. I'm gonna come back to my last curl and press. Awesome! Grab a quick sip of water. We're gonna go into our rows. So again, if you want your weights or you want a golf club, totally fine. If you want nothing, that's okay too. So, I'm gonna use the golf club. So the row, and we've done this before. We did some of those um, flies with Justin last week. So we're going into a bit of a bent stance, right? So knees are slightly bent. My chest is moving, I'm hip hinging. We worked a lot on that. My back is flat. So I am not like this, Roger Nakagawa, no rounding. <laughs> Squeeze your shoulder blades together, push that chest towards the floor, stick your butt out. So we're gonna do just some regular rowing, five, rows we're just gonna go what i want you to do is i want you to keep those elbows i don't want them out here i want them close to the body so this is a bent row in the gym we would load say like a cable or like a heavy um you could do like a barbell so with uh weights on either side gary just hinge over more like you got your pitching wedge in your hand there you go good perfect good so yeah this would be like um like your uh putting stance or like an iron, like a, an iron stance, a high iron maybe. But we wanna keep those elbows close. Good. So basic row. Now what we're gonna do is, that was like an overhand row, right? So we're gonna do a matrix. I'm gonna show you two other hand positions. So I've got palms facing each other. You can do this on the golf club, right? Or you can do it with your dumbbells. So you've got palms facing each other and I'm just gonna row. If this bothers any of your guys' lower back, just kind of split your stance. You can stagger your stance, so like one foot in front of the other and do it. Just if, you, if, it bother, if this bothers your lower back, split your stance a little bit. If not, do what Shannon's saying. And then our last one is gonna be underhand. So we had overhand, palms facing, and then underhand. So again, my last stance, I'm here, just like what Justin said. I'm, I'm split stance, my back is flat. I'm gonna tuck my tail a little bit, bring that belly button to the spine, and I'm just gonna drive. I wanna keep those elbows so close to my body that I feel them sort of touching the side of my body. And I'm squeezing, I'm squeezing my shoulder blades together like I've got a pencil. Million dollar bill back there. Awesome, last one, good. All right, we've got one more matrix. And then I'll turn it over to Justin. So we're gonna come down into a push-up position. So um, you can do this again on your knees if you want a pad, a pillow, whatever you like. Um, we're gonna do regular hand position, then we're gonna go staggered each way, then we're gonna go narrow and wide. Um, we'll do three in each position. So Get started with your three regular. Now, if you want to do this on the couch, you want to do this on the wall, you can do this any place you want. All we really want is a pushing and retracting movement. So that's going to be regular. Now I'm going to go staggered. So I'm going to go right hand forward, left hand back, just like we did with the feet earlier. So I've got one, one hand forward and one hand back. And I'm on my knees, and that is totally cool, whatever works for you. Left hand is forward, right hand is back. And again, push up, three. All right, we got two more hand positions. We're gonna go narrow. So it doesn't have to be diamond, but narrow in the sense it's just a little bit inside your shoulders, and just three here. So this is a real tricep push up, real close to the body, keep those arms nice and tight. One more. Awesome. That's a tough one. Now we're going to go real wide. So just get three here on the last one, that wide one. I want you to keep pushing through the chest. Good. So 
So I'm sure you can feel the difference in all of those. And again, you can do them on a bench, on a table, on a chair, whatever works for you. But that's a great retraction and protraction exercise. So really good for the shoulders. But using those different tweaks. So we just did five different movements in multiple planes of motion, which is amazing. So if you're gonna feel that, different, those different positions, Definitely try this again. I'll send you the video and you'll be able to kind of see, really start to feel. I think you guys have all become really nicely body aware of, you know, how things feel. So with the, regards to the glutes, the way you stand, the way you retract, how you feel when your shoulder blades pinch together. Um, so if you have any other questions about the 3D movement stuff, let me know. Um, I can certainly send you some more information. Um, Justin, we're at 30 after. I'm gonna turn it over to you and you can continue on. Okay guys, so grab, um, grab a club if you have it or a stick. We're gonna use some of that. So we're going to do similar to Shannon. We're gonna work some rotational patterns, some balance patterns, more golf swingy. So you guys can start to translate what we're doing, you know, in the gym, so to speak, to the golf course. So um, I'm going to show you two variations. So the, the, the variation, if you have, if balance is an issue, when we're going to start is going to be to use the, your club for some balance. If you find that you're okay with that, then we'll just take the club and cross it across our bodies, okay? So what we're going to do first is we're just going to get you comfortable on one leg versus the other. So remember the variation, if you want to start with, we're going to start balancing on our right leg. So I would have the club in my right hand, but if that's easy, then put the club across your chest. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna work 10 nice and slow reps, similar to what we've done in the past. So you're balancing on your right foot and you're lifting up onto your left, and then you're bringing it down. And when you're lifting your left leg, what I want you to think about that right leg that's on the ground, you should be squeezing your butt as that happens. So we're going slow, we're controlling, nothing else is moving. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna work as we go. So get to 10, slow and controlled. Nothing should be happening. Nothing should be changing. What we're gonna start to do is thinking about our backswing and our, and our downswing is transferring weight dynamically from our one leg to our opposite leg. So if you're a lefty, a lot of this will be, we're gonna do both sides, but some of the info will be you know, opposite for you. So once you get to 10, up, upright and tall, what I want you to do next, I'll move a little closer so you can see, is I'm going to just start to shift my hip and rotate. So think about if you were gonna take a swing, you kind of rotate back. That's basically what I want you to do from an upright position, so watch. So I'm gonna rotate a little bit and now my leg is gonna cross over. And now I'm working on balance with a little bit of rotation. So I'm on my right leg, my left knee is kind of crossing over and bringing it back down and crossing over and bringing it back down. So I'm going slow and controlled, and what I'm thinking about is it should feel right glute right now with a little bit of rotation. So get to 10. And then take a break. So another point to kind of consider here, one of the flaws a lot of people talk about in the swing is on the back swing is kind of the, the, a sway back, right? So when we're doing this, I don't, want it, I don't want to see a rotation. I don't want to see swaying to the side. I want to see a nice rotation. See how I'm rotating through and I'm not just kind of swaying my body. So now let's go to the other side. So for your righties, this is going to be your down swing. For your lefties, this is going to be your back swing. So I'm balancing on my left foot and I'm just gonna lift and I'm gonna hold and down. Lift and down. So as you do this, again, think abs. And if your left leg is down, think your glutes are working, your left butt cheek, so you're really trying to stabilize. And when you get to 10, we're gonna add our rotation component. So we're going to up and rotate up and rotate across, up and rotate.
Good. And when you get to 10, then what I want you to do is I want you to basically get into your backswing. So if you're a righty, you're going to be rotating right. If you're a lefty, I want you to be rotating left. So I want you to get into your backswing. I want you to hold. So depending on the type of player you are, the swing you do, I mean, depends on how much weight you have on your right side, but most people in this position are going to have more weight on their backside leg, so as a righty, the right foot. And now from there, I have a little rotation, but now I'm gonna put all my weight onto my back leg, and now I'm gonna hold that position. And I want you to feel what it feels like to over-exaggerate and be able to balance. Now again, I always say, if we can't do it slow, it's not gonna happen when we go fast. So if you can balance on that side and you feel stable there, that's good. If you don't, then most likely you're losing balance or losing posture in your backswing when it happens fast. And then relax. And then we're gonna do that again. So you're gonna get into your backswing position and then we're gonna lift and we're gonna hold. So we have all of our weight on our one foot and relax. And then again. So more specifically, if you want to go into detail here, and this is what Shannon and I mentioned this kind of our last class in person about um, Mike Adams with the force pedals. On your backswing with the force pedal, if you had that, most of your weight would be on your, you know, as a righty and your back heel. So as you're balancing, you should be putting weight onto your right back heel if you're a righty and your left back heel is a lefty. If you're balancing here and most of your weight's on your right back heel, you're gonna be activating that glute the way that we want. Good, now, everyone, I want you to go into your finished position, so into here. So for me, I'm a righty, I'm gonna be finished here. Now, I just want you to lift your heel off the ground and hold that position. So lift your back leg off the ground and hold. and hold and down. So now I've got into my finish where I'm upright tall. I have 90% of my weight, 95% of my weight, and I can lift my back leg. So I want you to do 10 reps of this. So you rotate as you're finishing your swing and then lift up your back heel. Hey, Mauro, when you come through, get a little bit more tall. So you're bent over a little bit. Yep. There we go. That's it. Nice. This one, I really want you to pause and then lift and hold that position. So I talked about a little bit on the backswing, how depending on the type of golfer you are, how much weight you put on your back foot as you go backwards. That's kind of up for debate a little bit, depending on, on who's teaching you and what your style is. The downswing though, the finish, I've never heard anyone say that we have 50-50 weight forward and back. Everybody is always 99% of the weight is on their front leg. You guys have probably seen like, the has anyone ever seen the Gary Player drill where he swings and then he walks forward? With the idea that you have so much of your weight on the front leg that you could literally start to move forward. So, as you guys start to feel this on your downswing, on your finish and your follow through, it should feel, even if I was playing right now, right now, I should theoretically just be able to lift this foot off the ground because all 99, 100% of my weight is over my front side. So as you start to see this, what we're working on now is that backswing is getting weight onto that back heel, but then making sure that as we start our initiate our downswing, we're transferring it onto our front side and that we have the ability to balance. So as you think about it, what I often think about is, is when someone goes to like a golf coach or they have a problem in their swing and one of the things is, let's just say I have a trouble getting, transferring my weight forward. My first question would be, well, do you have the balance to support it? Because if you're playing a, a match or you're playing, you're not gonna be thinking about balancing, but what's gonna happen is you're just gonna end up like this because you, your brain knows if I try to do this, I'm gonna fall over. So the idea of today is if you're doing this and it's really hard for you to balance on one foot, that's a good indication of you're not transferring your weight through. So then we talk about ball spraying all over, not getting the distance, all these different types of things simply because your brain doesn't have the ability to balance. And again, this is something we obviously can work on and we should work on from our, you know, from, from our house. 
So let's go back and do this again. So we're going to take our backswing. We're going to pause. And then we're going to lift up our front leg and balance all of our weight on our front side. As you're holding that balance position, what I want you to think about feeling is most of the pressure is in your back heel. Most of the weight is in your glute. So I'll go from the side, so I'm rotating my back heel and I'm loaded into my back hip and then I'm balancing and I'm holding and then I'm relaxing. And let's do that again. We're gonna hold for 10 seconds. So do it with me. So rotate into your backswing. Feel right now with both feet on the ground, most of your weight is in your right side or your left side if you're a lefty. I feel it in my hip here. I feel it in my heel. And then I'm gonna lift my left foot and I'm gonna hold for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Take a break. So when you're doing that, you should feel that glute working. You should feel that hip working. You should feel your right heel. Now, let's go into our finished position. And now I'm gonna stand up tall and I'm gonna lift my heel and hold. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Nice Roger Brody. Nice one. Roger Mukigawa. Good. Good job guys. Good. All right, now let's go a little bit faster now. We're gonna go, we're gonna move a little with a little bit of tempo, but it's obviously not a full swing. But what I wanna see is get in your setup position, get in like a five iron posture. And what I want you to do is just watch me once. I'm gonna start my backswing and rotate, balance. I'm gonna put my foot down. I'm gonna do my downswing. I'm gonna balance. And that's the pace I want you to work. So get in your, let's do it with me here. So start in your five iron posture and I'll talk you through it. So slowly start your backswing, balance. Okay, put the foot back down, down swing, and then stand up tall, balance on the front side. Good, and do it again. So back to five iron, rotate into your backswing, balance. Good, foot back down, down on your, on the, on your front side, balance. We're gonna do five of these, that was two. Thanks, good. Tom, good job. Five iron posture, rotate in your backswing, Balance, good, foot comes back down. Transfer weight, come forward, stand up tall. That's it, Dwight, good. My lefties, nice job, Gary. Keep going, balance, foot down. Front leg and lift, good, do one more. So get in your five arm posture, rotate into your backswing. Balance on the backside. Good, foot back down. And then rotate forward. And then balance on the front side. So I'll just give you guys again, I always preface everything saying I'm not a swing coach. I can only give you my own experience. One of my issues when I start hitting the ball fat, so hitting too far behind the ball, is I don't make this transition to the front side. I kind of keep my old baseball swing and keep my weight back, and I hit behind the ball. So for me, this drill works great because it forced me to go slow and actually start to transfer the weight onto the front side so that I don't just hit all my shots fat behind the ball. And for me, going slower really helps because it forces – me to be slow enough with my lower body that my upper body can kind of slow down as well. So if you guys that kind of get caught or shots hit fat, one of the things to start to look at, are you getting your weight going forward? Are you getting your weight going forward? And, and kind of then you back it up a step. Can I actually balance once I have my weight going forward? So all these different little nuances. And, and I, I give this to you because Kind of the reason why I like seeing a lot of different swing coaches, even for myself, just ideas, because there might be one thing that, you know, I hear that's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So maybe for you guys, when you're out there and it's like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, 
maybe it's like, all right, is this something that I have a problem with that I don't get my weight back or don't transfer my weight forward? And then I eventually have a bit of an issue. Okay, so now, like we usually do, we break up kind of upper and lower body. So that was more of lower body rotation. So now what we're going to do, the motion is going to be really small. So I want to work balance, but I want you to work on your torso, your thoracic, your rib cage, kind of your logo on your shirt. So we've done this in the past in your five arm posture. We've just worked a little bit of rotation here, but now we're more advanced. So what I want you to do is I want you to, we're going to do this from an upright position first. You're going to balance on one foot. You're going to cross your arms. And then all I want you to do is just work a little bit of thoracic spine rotation. Now, if you're rotating really far, you're doing it wrong. I can rotate really far here, but I'm moving everything. I don't want to do that. I want my pelvis and my torso, those are glued down. I'm working this area here, so I'm balancing and I'm just rotating my torso a little bit and then rotating my torso a little bit. Notice how my belly button and my knee are square to the camera. And I'm just trying to rotate through my thoracic. So we're gonna do 10 on each side here. If you lose your balance, reset. Up and then rotate. If the balance is too much of a trouble, go back in your five iron posture, both feet down, and just work this. But here, let's go ahead and lift, and then we'll do some torso rotation. Let's try to do 10 on each side and take a break. If you're looking at yourself in the camera, I shouldn't see any of this moving. Literally, my belly button and my knee are, are moving, and I just see my th thoracic, my shoulders, start to rotate. And once you get to 10, take a break. Again, it's a small movement. If you're going far, you're probably doing it wrong. Nice and let's job, flip sides that. and do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And what I want you guys to start to feel based on the next one that we do is the difference between the thoracic and the torso rotating and then the hips rotating, which we'll do in a sec. So let's do 10 on each side. So balance on the left and rotate through the torso, the thoracic, and then 10 on the right. You should feel maybe your glute working. You could feel your hip flexor working on that side. You should feel a little bit of rotation through the, uh, through the back. Now again, I'm gonna hammer this home because we always wanna talk about, you know, the number one complaint of most golfers, myself included, is what, lower back pain. And the biggest thing here is that a lot of times it does too much of the work, too much of the rotation. So what we're doing here is making sure like we always do that you guys understand that we should feel the above the lower back and then below the lower back and the hips are the things that are going to do most of the lion's share of the rotation, okay? So now we're gonna do the same thing but the opposite, right? So we just did balance on one foot and we just moved a little bit through the torso. Watch this, now I'm gonna balance, I'm gonna move through the hip so rather than it just being a small motion, and this is gonna really test your balance, I'm gonna try and open my whole body without my foot moving. And it, see, it's, it's challenging. And this is really getting the hip to rotate and balance. So I'm rotating across, and then I'm rotating open, but my whole body is moving. And if you need to reset on each one, that's okay. This is a great for the glutes. The glutes have muscles in it that literally all they do is rotate your hip. So if you're bouncing on your right foot right now, you're just getting your hip to basically move your entire body. Up tall, rotate. Up tall, and then rotate. Do 10 on each side. And then when you're done with that, take a break, grab a sip of water. Moro, slow your movement down just a little bit so it's a little bit more controlled. That's better. Easier to balance. So grab a sip of water and then we're gonna do it together this time. And we're going to now, again, starting to put the pieces together. We're going to work on transferring weight from right to left, making sure that you can balance in a dynamic fashion and add rotation. But grab a sip of water. We'll get started in a sec. Give yourself a minute. 
you feel like you're not working, you're probably not doing it right. This is, it seems like silly, but it's challenging stuff. If you're doing it correctly. You've got small muscles activated and working here. I know we talked about it in, uh, in our sessions. Something else to kind of consider too is if you're doing this on your own, just an interesting experiment is if you feel like, let's say you're doing it right now without shoes on and it feels pretty good and you're balanced or maybe you have your, your, you know, your, your walking sneakers or your regular sneakers on and you feel good, I would try some of this stuff with your golf shoes on because obviously you need to be able to balance in your shoes. Now, if you realize you put your shoes on and it's a disaster, that's something to think about because then you have a, a, a equipment problem and that could be the a limiting factor. Maybe you put them on and you feel better. Well, that's good. And I know Shannon and I spoke about it briefly last time. I think that's probably the new frontier in golf technology where people are starting to pay attention to is the footwear and the shoe wear. But it's really easy for you guys to just look and say, I'm doing this in my Nikes and it feels great, my sneakers. And then I get my golf shoes on and all of a sudden I can't balance. But, it, you know, you're, you're probably, there's no shot. You're going to do it on a course that's uneven, that's soft, that's dynamic. So, again, something easy to think about doesn't take a you know it's not that challenging to see do I feel balanced can I do this here all right now we're gonna do this together we're gonna do some tempo here so we're gonna be I'll, I'll do a round one by myself and then we'll go do it together so I'm gonna be feet shoulder width apart I'm gonna first balance on my right side I'm gonna rotate one way I'm gonna rotate the other way and I'm gonna come down and then I'm gonna switch sides okay so let's start so I'll talk you through it so right foot down left foot up Hold your balance, rotate to the right, neutral, rotate to the left, neutral, down, left. Lift the right leg up, I'm gonna rotate to the left, rotate to the right, neutral, down. Balance on the right, lift your left leg up, rotate to the right, rotate to the left, and down, put it on the left, lift up the right leg, rotate to the left, rotate to the right, neutral, down, keep going, on the right, lift up your left, rotate to the right, rotate to the left, neutral, on the left, lift your leg up, rotate to the left, rotate to the right, down, or into two more on each side, on your right side, lift up your left foot, rotate to the right, rotate to the left, down on the left, lift up your right leg, rotate to the left, Ooh, my balance, rotate to the right, down one more time, lift up, rotate to the right, rotate to the left, down and on the left, last one, lift your right leg up, rotate to the left, to the right and down take a break Whew. it's challenging so two things number one you might practice it might got easier as you went through it because you're practicing it and you're getting it or as you got fatigued it might have gotten worse and so again one of the things to think about here one of the reasons why Shannon introduced some of the cardio stuff is because you know we don't look at golf as like you're breathing heavy so it's not a cardio based sport but if you find that your balance goes to hell, you know, 10 or 12 reps in, we could kind of extrapolate that and say, all right, what are we doing at the 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th hole? As we do get a little bit tired, you know, you're fully engaged mentally, you're taking swings, hopefully not too many swings, but there is a fatigue factor that we don't factor in. Then you start saying, all right, I'm going to play the next day or whatever. Um, I'm walking versus riding, but there's a lot of factors here that it, it's, you know, it's not a perfect science. I just had a bad day or was it that I was tired? You know, it was something there that I didn't even consider. So as you do, you want to build all this stuff thinking like, all right, I want it to be as good on rep one as rep as the last rep. The other side of this too, is if you guys kind of get to the, get to the course and don't do any sort of warm up, don't even swing the club at all. And you haven't kind of got your, your, your bearings together does it take you two to three holes to get your balance you know did you snap hook that just because your hands your balance was off and it wasn't just that you hadn't warmed up so there's a lot of different factors here to consider but hopefully this just kind of opens and everyone's going to be different that's the part of this that's you know one of you guys might say like if 
if I notice that I just practice a little bit of balance stuff for a minute or two or three minutes before my round, it really does help me. Another, you might say, if I do some torso rotation in my warm up, that really gets me opened up. Somebody might say it's their core. You know, everyone's got their own thing. There's, that's why, you know, if you went to the, a PGA event, everyone's got their own kind of routine down. I know, like, if you listen to Tiger now, based on all his injury history, like, he needs to do, I think, 45 minutes to an hour of stuff like this before he can go play. So that's why he plays so much less than he used to from a purely, like, energy conservation, but also, like, ability to, you know, back when he was 22, he could just kind of put his sneakers on, put his shoes on and go out and swing the club all day. Now he needs an hour to get ready to do it. So, you know, even at that level, they have that stuff too. And we all are in that boat. We all have that as well. Um, and the more disciplined we are with it, the longer, the better we'll play no 